So in this video, we're going to look at how to make a buffer at a suitable pH. And it's all going to start with our favorite equation, the Hendelson Hasselbalch equation. And this is the equation that we can use to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. So the pH of our buffer is the pKa. Remember, that is the negative log of Ka for that weak acid in our buffer, plus the log of the ratio of the base to the acid in our buffer. Remember, these are the conjugate pairs right that we're using so this is that weak acid weak base pair so for instance we could take a weak acid like hf and take its conjugate base f minus we could take a weak base like nh3 and take its conjugate acid nh4 plus and so these are the concentrations we're on about here all right we've seen before right that if we're trying to make the best buffer we would presumably want to have the concentration of the acid in the buffer approximately equal to the base and you might say, well, why is that? So, and the reason for that is that the acid in the buffer can neutralize bases, and the base in the buffer can neutralize acids. And if you're not sure what you're gonna get faced with, presumably you'd want equal amounts of acid or base in your buffer, because you're not quite sure how much base is gonna be added and how much acid might be added. So to hedge your bets, you want equal amounts. Now, if the concentration of the acid and the base in the buffer is the same, then that ratio in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation will be one, and the logarithm of the number one is zero. And so that means that when you've got equal amounts of acid and base, the pH of your buffer is essentially identical to the pKa of the buffer. So if we adjust our acid to base ratio, we can adjust the pH of our buffer. So perhaps we have a ratio of base to acid of 10 to one. So that would give us this fraction is equal to 10. Why might we have a ratio of 10 to one? Well, maybe we're expecting our buffer to be hit with acid. So we wanna have a lot of base capable of neutralizing all that acid that our buffer might be uh, seeing in the future. We can use the Handelson Hasselbalch equation now to calculate the pH. So the pH would be the pKa plus the log of that base to acid ratio. So now we've seen that would be 10. The logarithm of 10 is one. So that gives us a pH that is one unit bigger than our pKa. And we can also control it in the other direction. So perhaps we want to have 10 times more acid in our buffer than base. So that ratio now would be one to 10 or one tenth. Why might we want that? Well, if we have a lot of acid in our buffer, that means that we might be expecting to see base in our future, and maybe we want to hedge our bets and have a little bit of extra acid in there to neutralize any bases that might appear. We can use the Hendelson Hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH of our buffer now, and it's gonna be pKa plus the log of base acid, so that ratio is one over 10. The log of one over 10 is actually minus one, so that gives us a pH that is one unit below our pKa. So you gotta admit, that's pretty cool, right? We can control the pH of our buffer, and if we're expecting to see more acid or base, we can control that ratio to give us a better buffer. Our body makes use of this, so for instance, our bloodstream is buffered primarily to protect us against acid. And so because when we eat and drink, we produce acid bodies in the blood, and we want to be able to neutralize them. So we're gonna up the amount of basic compounds in our blood. We're gonna have a little more bicarbonate in our blood. And uh, because of this, this ratio can be you know bigger than one, which means that our buffer is gonna have a slightly higher pH than before. So in theory, we can prepare a buffer according to this equation at any pH we like. We just have to adjust that acid to base ratio. But in practice, what we find is that if we use too much base or too much acid, then we no longer have a buffer. If we have primarily one component and not the other, that's not really a buffer. And so most of the time, our buffer range is gonna be one unit higher or lower than the pKa. So a decent range would have the pH somewhere between pKa minus one and pKa plus one. So we really want our buffer somewhere in this range. And so if we're in the middle of the range, so if the pH is equal to the pKa, then we've got equal amounts of acid and base. But we can adjust it if we have, for instance, 10 times more base than acid in our buffer, we can have a pH one unit above. And if we have 10 times more acid than base in our buffer, we can have a pH one unit below. But when we start going too far in one direction or the other, we start to have an imbalance of the acid and the base in our buffer. And really that no longer provides us with decent prevention.